Hello and welcome to the Car Care Enough channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the current generation Lexus ES350. We're going to talk about some technical specifications that are important. We're going to talk about some things I like, some things I dislike about it, some things you should know about this Lexus if you own one or you're looking to buy one, and then we're going to talk about some common problems. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel, Welcome, consider subscribing to the channel, check out some of my other videos. If you are a returning subscriber, well, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. And without further ado, let's get right into it. So the Lexus ES, one of the orig original Lexus models since the inception of Lexus. For the longest time, the Lexus ES has been a sister car to the Toyota Camry, shared a lot of the platform, shared a lot of the engine options and whatnot. But at some point, it switched over to the Avalon, the Toyota Avalon. And while the Toyota Avalon is being discontinued after the year 2022, the Lexus ES keeps going. And I'm so glad for that because it's actually a fabulous car. Having said that, we're going to dig through the kind of the mechanical aspects and what's under the hood and how that come to be there. And you're going to notice the similarities between it and the Toyota Avalon when it comes to stuff under the hood. Let's talk about the Lexus ES powertrain, starting with the engines. There are three possible engines in this generation. One of them is the 3.5 liter V6 2GR FKS which is this one. Then there is the A25A FKS, that is in the ES250 all-wheel drive. And then there is the A25A FXS in the hybrid variant, the 300H. Now let's start with the V6. This V6 has been around for a while, and it has actually been in this configuration around since 2017. And this is actually an updated version of a 2GR FE engine, which has been around since 2005. So there is not as much high-tech technology in this guy, which makes it a good template for reliability. The A25A is an all-new engine that came out right around 2018 in the Toyota Camry. Now, both of these engines, both the V6 and the A25A, I did do a deep dive in them, talking about their technology and their newest advancements. I'll leave the links for these videos and if you want more details about these engines in the description of this video. But let's move on to the transmissions, and this is important. There are two possible transmissions, or actually three, depends how you look at it. If you have a V6 or you have an ES250 with an all-wheel drive model, you're going to have an 8-speed transmission. But the difference between these transmissions, and the reason why there's no all-wheel drive V6 is the transfer case. The transfer case connects to the transmission and it sends power to the rear wheels. While the V6 is simply too large in this model, they could not fit a transfer case and the V6 at the same time. So they had to compromise with the four cylinder. And folks, honestly, in the, in the ES250 all-wheel drive, it is a little bit of a restrained power level. It just doesn't feel as good as the, four, as the V6. However, on the hybrid model, we have an eCVT transmission, which just to clarify this one more time, there's nothing CVT about this transmission other than the operating theory, not the mechanicals. It has no belt, it has no horror stories. It's actually one of the best transmissions ever made and usually lasts the life of the car with very basic maintenance and rarely will give you any issues at all. Let's go back to the eight speed for a bit because there's a lot of debate on this. You might go Googling, is Toyota or Lexus 8-speed good? You're going to hear a lot of horror stories. Folks, I just want to clarify one thing. The version in the ES350 and even the ES250, it is a later version of the 8-speed. All the issues have been resolved. Really, the issues affected the first year, 2017, some Highlander and Sienna models. But in this, since 2019, there has been an updated version, which resolved a lot of the issues that they had. But one thing remains, and it's not really an issue, it's more of a feel. The way this transmission shifts, it can feel like it's hunting for gears. It feels like it's upshifting, downshifting all the time. That is a normal characteristic, and it's kind of a byproduct of having eight speeds. It's just too many gears to shuffle through, and it's going to feel like it's hunting for gears. I don't want you to be concerned if you own one and you feel that. That is a normal characteristic and it will not affect the longevity of this transmission. Another thing we will cover is the oil drive system. Folks, it is a very ancient oil drive system. Very simple, 
very trouble free, honestly. It just adds a little bit of maintenance. You gotta replace the fluid in the transfer case every 30,000 miles, in the differential every 30,000 miles, and that's really it. You rarely have issues with those. It's an old school design. It's nothing new and innovative and all this craziness. It is an old school, tried and true, all wheel drive system. And then let's talk a little bit about the hybrid. The hybrid has possibly one of the best generation hybrids ever to come out on the Toyota Lexus world. It is the latest generation hybrid. The battery sits underneath the back seat and it is one of the best generations, both from gas mileage, power, and smoothness. In my opinion, if you're looking for gas mileage over power, flat power from the V6, that will be your best bet because it'll get much better gas mileage and it is actually very refined. If you used to own an old ES hybrid, this is a major improvement over the previous generation. So let's talk about some things that I really like about the Lexus ES. Starting with the most important one. Many cars in this segment have been too technological, they went too far advanced and now they're becoming basically short of a spaceship. But the Lexus ES, while it does have a lot of features and a lot of advancements and a lot of technology that come in the package, there are certain things that remain old school and for a good reason, because not everything needs to be advanced with time. Certain things worked 50 years ago and they work great today and they'll continue to work 50 years from now and most people don't want the hour complication. Don't reinvent the wheel, car manufacturers. The shifter. The shifter on the Lexus is not some button or dial or this crazy unnecessary complication. It's just a good old shifter that you move that has an old school cable going to a transmission. Now some people will say, well, I want all this technology. Yes, you want in the radio, in the infotainment, the gauges, in the fuel economy, in the powertrain, but simple things need to remain simple, just like this. Another simple thing is the layout of everything. You don't need to scroll through 17 menus just to operate something that you're going to use every single day. All the climate controls are here. All the radio controls are here. All your he seat heating and, and cooling are here. Steering heater, it's right here. It's a button. You don't need to be taking your attention away from driving into here just to figure out how all this works. This has basically been the same layout for years and years and it works great. Why change it? There's no need to innovate in things that work. One thing that I absolutely love about this interior is how classy it is. It is a very nice looking interior. Everything you touch feels right. There is soft touch materials everywhere. Things look very upscale and nice. And they basically took a car, which is a Toyota Avalon, that is really nice to begin with, and they took it to the next level. I think they made significant improvement in the Lexus side, which makes it not feel like an Avalon with a, with a Lexus badge and a little bit more leather. No, it's a completely different interior and it shows. And some of the things that I specifically like about this interior is the automatic function of the seat heaters and the steering wheel warmer. This is really nice because most Toyota lineup, you turn it on, even the Lexus stuff, some of the older stuff, you turn it on and it's on, you got to shut it off and all this. This is automatic. This is, this is the kind of things that you want in an upscale car. You want to justify the cost from going from an Avalon to a Lexus, things like that. Things like there is a leather here, there is a, a very nice design, it looks like a complete cockpit in the interior. It is really features like this that distinguish the ES from just an Avalon, which costs less. Another thing that I absolutely love about this interior is this double hinge center console. It opens this way, but then it also opens this way. Now, some people will say, well, why can't it just open to the back? Because when it does, you're going to open the back and you have to scroll this way to open it. And yes, that's not the end of the world, but you're buying a Lexus. You're buying a more high-end car. It needs to have a little bit better features where you open this, you can access your stuff, and then your passenger can do the same. And I think this is really nice. Now, another thing about this interior, when, when you're driving the car, we said it's a very nice place to be. It is very nice and refined and looks very luxurious. But another thing is how quiet this car is. Now, it is not as quiet as an LS, for example, but it is sufficiently quiet where you're going to notice a significant difference going from an Avalon to the Lexus ES. 
It's very quiet, it's very insulated from the road, and actually at the similar level of quietness as some of the higher level or higher priced cars in this segment. Now let's talk about some things I dislike about the Lexus. Starting with the F Sport. 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 This is actually not just related to this Lexus. This is the entire Lexus lineup and even the Toyota side. Folks, newsflash. Toyota Lexus products are not entirely made to be extremely exciting. And while journalists love to knock them down for this, it's actually not a problem. Because most people buy Lexus, buy Toyota products, not because they're thrilling and exciting and emotional and all that. They buy them because they're, they're reliable. And all their exciting competitors will never come even close to how reliable these things are. And that's the whole point of these cars. When they make the F Sport, like this one behind me, looks very nice on the outside. I think it looks more exciting than the r standard version. But what they add to it in the sense of the sport is really not good. First, it has stiffer suspension, bigger wheels, and the horribly uncomfortable bucket seats. Why did they have to do this? Because it's still not an exciting car. It still doesn't really handle super good and significantly different than the regular model. But now added to that is it's not very comfortable, it is jarring, and it's noisier. Why? I just don't like the F Sport model. I wish the F Sport model was actually not an F Sport model. It was just an appearance package. Looks a little nicer of a car that already drives okay. Ever since this platform moved to the TNGA, the Toyota New Global Architecture platform, they do drive better. They do handle better. And that's good enough, I think. I don't think you need to make it a jarring ride for the two journalists to give you a thumbs up and then everybody else be horribly uncomfortable for 10 years. And then the other thing that I dislike about it is the Lexus touch mouse thingy in the middle. Now, the journalists always hated this and unfortunately I am with them on this one because what was wrong with just having a touch screen? And yes, in the 2022 model with the facelift model, they do have a touch screen now, but they still have this horrible pad that is more distracting than it is supposed to make you not distracted. It is super distracting. It was super annoying. You're always constantly, okay, is it on my, what I want to select? It is super annoying. And if you're really into the infotainment systems and you want them to work very streamlined, it's very annoying. It's just not good. And I hope one day they just, get rid of it or make a better system. Unfortunately, the cars in this segment, they all have some sort of uh, center thing. Mercedes has command, BMW have iDrive and all this stuff. Some of them work okay, some of them are not great, but that's just the thing with this segment of cars. And Lexus's model, it doesn't work good. And I'm glad that they decided, let's make the screen touch so at least you can ignore that and use the touch screen. And the last thing I don't like about it, and this is more of a personal taste thing. The back end does not look very good. I just feel like they designed it very nice and then they put it in a crusher and just went, just compressed it a little bit. It just looks too nosy in the back. I don't know. It's just a taste thing. And the front looks really good. The back, mm, not so much. It just doesn't feel like it follows the same design theme. It almost feels like whoever designed the front went on vacation and, so, and a substitute took over and designed the back. It just doesn't look right. Now let's talk about some things that you might not know about the Lexus ES. Little things that you will not find out until you actually own one and spend some time with it. First one is the wipers. Now when you go pull the wipers off to replace them, they're going to hit the hood. And typically you're going to have to turn on the wiper, go halfway, shut off the key, and hopefully it'll stay there. Well, Lexus thought of that and this is actually one of their new platform design. The wipers have a service position. All you got to do to activate that mode is turn off the key and within 45 seconds, pull up and hold the wiper arm. Give it a few seconds and it'll activate the wipers to a service position. When you're done replacing your wipers or servicing them, 
Just start the car and just hit the wiper and it'll come back to its normal resting position and life is good. It's a very cool feature if you want to replace the wipers without scratching the hood. Another cool thing about it is, and for some reason they didn't put a mark on it, so it's there but most people don't know it's there. Let's say you're playing a radio and you just want to mute the radio immediately. You don't have to lower all the volume all the way down. Well the mode button that changes the mode in the radio, if you press and hold that, it'll actually mute the radio. Now the older models, they used to have a sign on that mode button. They don't anymore for some reason, but it still does the same function. Another thing about this model is the remote start. Now, you might know that you can act, you have to subscribe to this giant service that costs you money and you can go through the app, remote start the car, and all that is good. But did you know that you can actually remote start it with the key itself? You just Press lock once, press lock twice, and then the third time, press it and hold it until the lights start flashing and voila, the car starts. And one thing that people are not sure about, and let's clarify that, whether you have the subscription or not, the remote start from the remote will still work. It is not the greatest because you're limited by the range of the remote, but hey, if you're not paying for anything, it's free. And if this car is parked right outside of your window, you can actually remote start it for free and it comes included in the car. Well, let's talk about some common problems with this generation. And honestly, I'll say this, the launch of this model and its sister model, the Avalon, has been a very successful one. Usually when a new model launches, you're gonna have some small issues here and there, and Lexus and Toyota are pretty much on top of their stuff. They're always very active about fixing the problems very early. Their motto is early detection, early resolution. But there are a few things with the Lexus that you might wanna know about, specifically if you're shopping for a used one, like 19, 20, some 21s. The first thing is the driver's seat, and this affects only 2019 model. When you recline the seat, it's gonna make a lot of creaking noises. Now, there are there's an official fix to inject some grease here and there, but be prepared that there, that fix might be a little temporary and you might end up having to replace the seat frame. So just thought I'd let you know this because most people when they get in the car, they get adjust the seat and life's good and you're gonna leave it there. But then come one day you adjust it and it makes all this creaking sound. So do check them if you're buying a used one. And another thing, and this is really not a problem, but I wanna re-emphasize this, the eight-speed transmission. Again, you're gonna hear all kinds of horror stories, but never to the ES itself. The transmission can be jumpy, folks. It can shift a lot, and it feels like it's hunting for gears. That is normal characteristics for this transmission. Don't worry that it's a problem that's only gonna get worse. Actually, and this is something that I will tell you from, the, from experience, if you have issues with this transmission, you're gonna to want to reset the memory, to reset everything to fresh for your driving style. And the only way to do this is using a scan tool. That's the only way to do it. So perhaps ask your dealership if you're having some, some weird shifting to reset the transmission memory and everything will be okay. And then the radios. And this is not really specific to the Lexus ES. This is a whole Lexus lineup. The radios will have issues because when you update your phone, some software on the phone will change and the car is still behind, so you constantly have to get updates for these radios. The dealership can do the updates, they're not really expensive to do, and some dealerships might even do them for free. But this is something that you need to know about the radios. When you have issues, the first thing you do is get an update for it, make sure it's the latest update, because most of the time the updates will fix all the issues that you have. And another thing is something called a DCM, data communication module. And what this guy does is it controls the connected services. So when you want to remote start your car, find where it is, lock and unlock and all that good stuff. But in 2020, in 2021, they had a few issues with these. Now, all the issues are related to operation, so if, if you don't have a service that is active, you don't really use it, you're not gonna feel it. But there's one thing that you need to know about. If all of a sudden your battery starts dying out of the blue, and the battery is good, you charge it, it's fine, then two days later it's dead, there is actually a software update for the DCM to fix that. And the DCM, which is basically a glorified cell phone, it continues to stay active as you shut off the car. It's supposed to go to sleep after some time. It just stays active and stays sending signal and kills the battery. So there's a software update for that that will take care of this issue. I thought I'd let you know in case you have a mysterious dying battery and you wonder what's going on. So that's your Lexus ES. Folks, the people who buy this car will need to keep the following in mind. 
you need to be buying it for its reliability and you need to be buying for its refinement. Because otherwise, go buy a Camry or Avalon, they're cheaper and they're basically the same underneath. But if you want basically an Avalon or Camry with a little bit more upscale feeling, better materials, quieter, more refined, kind of maybe different looking, nicer in the front. I don't know about the back, I kind of don't like it. But this is the car for you. But the main thing for buying a Lexus over, I don't know, an Infiniti or a Mercedes or BMW or an Audi should be reliability, never the driving experience. Because folks, these cars are honest to God cars. They're not very exciting to drive. They're good, they're nice, but they're not thrilling. The main reason you should be buying this car is reliability overall. And a last recommendation for you, if you're buying one of these, you're wondering, should I lease it? Should I buy it new? These are best when you own them for 10 to 15 years because they really last that long without major issues with good maintenance and the maintenance is not sky expensive. For example, this ES350, unlike all its rivals, it takes regular gas. So right off the bat, just driving it, you're saving money because the engine in this car is from an Avalon. And Lexus did have a tendency of saying their cars need premium fuel and they tune the engine a little bit to get you three more extra horsepower to justify it. They didn't do that with this. This takes regular gas. And I think that's great because it is essentially an Avalon Camry V6 engine. Why would you need premium gas? I hope this video is helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of my other videos. Until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you, and you have yourself a wonderful day.